students today we will discuss thermodynamic distribution law i am dr sb pulla department of physics so the arts commerce and science department of physics so friends consider a system of independent independent indistinguishable particles particles are independent and indistinguishable but they are having different energies and different position so they can be treated as first points in this case now to determine energy distribution of these particles in equilibrium state we divide the volume in phase space into large number of compartments then again each compartment is divided into elementary cells of size h cube h is planck's constant no friends let the compartments are one two red i red okay and they are having energy values as capital u capital u and like capital e k and containing g1 g2 red g i red g k cells respectively in them so there are compartments in phase 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 1 to k having energy c1 to e k and each compartment containing g1 g2 g2 cells respectively g k cells so total number of particles in system are n is given by n1 plus n2 plus n2 plus n2 plus n2 plus n2 plus n2 now friends we have to find distribution of ni fermions out of total n fermions in gi cells of i compartment no basic postulates you know particles are indistinguishable so that there is no distinction between the various ways ni in which particles are so the second particles obey pauli exclusion principle according to this only one particle can be in given cell that is meaning of this is number of cells is much greater than number of particles so total number of different ways of arranging ni particles among available gi cells with energy level ei is given by this equation so first particle is chosen by gi base second particle is chosen by gi minus 1 like this so gi into gi minus 1 into gi minus 2 into gi minus 2 that is gi minus ni minus 1 So finally, we can write G I factorial upon G I minus N I factorial equation first. So since particles are indistinguishable, so total number of different distinguishable ways are like this: G I factorial upon N I factorial into G I minus N I factorial equation two. Because the order does not matter; the particles are identical, indistinguishable. So in a particular energy level, whatever may be the order, it is meaningless. So we have to divide this factor by this n i one n i factorial. So the final probability for macro state n one n two that that n i that that n k in the system is w is given by g one factorial upon n one factorial into g one minus n one factorial into g two factorial upon n two factorial into g two minus n two factorial into that dash into g i factorial upon n i factorial into g i minus n i factorial into that dash g k factorial upon n k factorial into g k minus n k factorial. So finally, we can write by using this product sign. So product sign of i is one to k g i factorial upon n i factorial into g i minus n i factorial. Question three. So for most probable macro state, we have to take natural logarithm of both sides of equation three. So log w is equal to no sum. Product sign is converted into summation sign. As summation i one to k log of j factorial minus log of n i factorial minus log of j minus n i factorial. So here j i n i are large terms. So applying Stirling approximation to this equation, we can write log w is equal to summation i one to k. So Here G I log G I minus G I what is minus N I log N I minus minus plus N I for this minus G I minus N I log of G I minus N I minus minus plus G I minus N I. So here this G I will get cancelled. 
again this ni will get cancelled so what is remaining so is equal to summation i is equal to k gi log gi minus this ni log ni minus gi minus ni log gi minus ni so differentiating this so then log w is equal to summation i is equal to k the differential of this term is zero because this is constant so the take differential of this term minus n i is k constant differential of this log n i is one upon n i del by n minus this log n i is k constant differential of this is delta n i plus here j minus n i is k constant differential of this is one upon j minus n i delta n i plus log of this j minus n i is k constant differential of this is delta n i so finally after simplifying this we can write summation i equal to k log of j minus n i minus log of n i delta n i so to get maximum w we have to equate this delta log w to zero so doing this summation i equal to k log of j minus n i minus log of n i delta n i equal to zero we have equated this equation differential to zero so summation i equal to k write this in the form of log of a m a minus b as log a upon log b like this log of j minus n i upon this n i upset delta n i zero so minus summation i equal to k log of n i upon j minus n i delta n i equal to zero so friends we have inverted here so it is equal to summation i equal to k log of n i upon j minus n i delta n i equal to zero equation four the so system must satisfy two auxiliary conditions which are the first conservation of total number of particles second conservation of total energy of the system so we will take first so number of particles cn is equal to summation i n is constant so differential of this is delta n is equal to summation i delta n is zero differential of constant is zero equation 5 so second e is equal to summation i n i a is equal to constant energy total energy of the system remains constant so again differential of this delta is delta is equal to summation i e i d n i is equal to delta n is equal to zero this is equation 6 now multiply equation 5 by alpha then 6 by beta and add to 4 here multiply this equation by alpha multiply this equation by beta and add to equation 4 so we can write summation i is one one to get so log of n i upon j minus n i plus alpha plus beta i and offset delta n i is equal to zero now remove this sign so log of n i upon j minus n i plus alpha plus beta i is equal to zero so n i upon j minus n i is equal to e raised to minus alpha plus beta i and remove we have removed this log sign so here e raised to this term is taken so minus term so j i upon n i upon n i invert this so is equal to e raised to plus alpha plus beta i so j i upon n i minus this one is equal to e raised to alpha plus beta i so j i upon n i is equal to e raised to alpha plus beta i plus one so n i is equal to j upon this term e raised to alpha plus beta i plus one equation seven equation seven is known as fermi dirac distribution law for assembly of fermions so from equation seven here put we put beta i as one upon k so n i is equal to j upon e raised to alpha plus k i upon k t plus one so is equal to j upon e raised to alpha It is three upon k t plus one equation eight. Now, friends, Fermi derived energy distribution function. From equation eight, the function A P I. A P I means number of states occupied by electrons to how many level of states. So A P I is equal to n upon j. So is equal to one upon two alpha. It is three upon k t plus one equation nine. So for continuous distribution of energy at energy E, the distribution function is A P is equal to One upon this two alpha e raised to e upon k t plus one equation ten. Now friends, you will see Fermi derived energy distribution law for continuous variation of energy. Means if the energy levels are very close, 
the distribution of energy of particles may be considered continuous and for this distribution number of particles a d e whose energies lie in the range p e and e plus b is n d e is equal to a p into g d e question 11 so n d e is equal to g d e upon e raised to alpha into e raised to e upon k t plus 1 which is taken from previous relation so for particles like electron now electron have plus or minus one of h cross p so we have multiplied by 2 Plus half and minus half, so into two. So n d is equal to two into two pi v into two m upon h cross h square raised to three by two into e raised to half d e upon e raised to alpha into e raised to e upon k t plus one into ten thirty. This is the reference I have used for this for further relation preparation. Thank you.